Welcome aboard. Today's tour has us in Italy. We are in Naples. We are at the Naples Capo de Chino Airport. Today we fly south from here to Mount Vesuvius. Vesuvius is an active volcano that was the site of the worst natural disaster of the ancient world. Let's get the plane started and the cockpit set up. We'll take a look at today's flight plan and we will get underway. Let's fly. <music> Quick look at the flight plan showing we are departing and arriving back here at the same airport. On the map here we see both Vesuvius and the location of Pompeii, the ancient Roman city that was destroyed by the volcano. Naples Airport Information Alpha 10000. Wind 268 at 3. Visibility, niner. Sky condition, clear. Temperature, 1-4. 2.13. We are on our way, so buckle up, we will be in the air shortly. If you are new here, what I do is I find interesting places with an interesting story and I take you there in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today we are back in the Cessna Grand Caravan 208B. Naples Tower Dude 005 at runway 24 ready for takeoff IFR to Naples. Dude 005 cleared for takeoff runway 24. We are departing the airport to the north, but we will be getting this plane turned around so we can fly south along the coast in the Bay of Naples, then make our way to and over the volcano summit. It's a beautiful day for a flight, and the view from the top of Vesuvius will be amazing. Hopefully we do not have any eruptions today, so we should be safe, well except for my terrible landings, which probably will endanger us all.
And there is the mountain ahead of us. Vesuvius is one of the most well-known volcanoes in the world, also called Mount Vesuvius. It's an active volcano that rises above the Bay of Naples in the region of Campania here in southern Italy. Its western base rests almost at the bay, and the height of the cone is 4,203 feet, 1,281 meters. But historically, its height varies uh, considerably after each major eruption. At about 1,968 feet, about 600 meters, there's a semicircular ridge called Mount Soma that is around Vesuvius. At the summit of the cone, there's a large crater, about 1,000 feet or 305 meters deep and 2,000 feet across, about 610 meters. And it was formed in the eruption um, of 1944. Vesuvius and Soma are actually both volcanoes. While the main peak is named Vesuvius, the other mountain, which is attached to it, Mount Soma, uh, Mount Vesuvius actually grew out of the top of Mount Soma. It's believed that the word volcano is derived from the Roman god of flame and metal forgery, Vulcan. We will climb an altitude here, we'll make our way around and up to the summit. The ridge you see here at the western side is Mount Soma. Beautiful view here from the top of Vesuvius, looking out over the bay. Get your cameras out. And let's take one more pass right over the top of the volcano so we can look right down into the crater.
Now let's head south from here and we will find the location of the Pompeii ruins. The volcano did show signs that it was about to erupt back in 79 AD. Uh, in the lead up to the eruptions, there was a series of earthquakes, uh, of course unknown to a lot of the citizens of Pompeii and Herculaneum. Uh, they didn't realize these were the signs of something bad to come. On August 24th, 79 AD, or at least that's the date that many agree on, after centuries of dormancy, Mount Vesuvius erupted, devastating the Roman cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum, killing thousands of their citizens. The city of Pompeii was buried under a thick layer of volcanic material. At the time of the Roman Empire, it was estimated that as many as 10 to 20,000 people lived in Pompeii and the surrounding areas. Including merchants, artists, and farmers who benefited from the rich soil of the region and had numerous vineyards and orchards. Of course, the black fertile earth was actually of earlier eruptions of Mount Vesuvius. Herculaneum was a city of about 5,000 and it was a favorite summer destination for the wealthy Romans. At noon on August 24th, 79 AD, the peak of Mount Vesuvius exploded, propelling a 10 to 15 mile high mushroom cloud of ash and pumice into the air. For the next 12 to 18 hours, volcanic ash and a hail of pumice stones showered down on them, forcing the city's occupants to flee in terror. Some 2,000 or more people although stayed in Pompeii, sheltering in cellars or stone structures hoping to be sheltered from the eruption. For those who did stay behind in Pompeii, the conditions grew worse. As more and more ash fell, it clogged the air, making it difficult to breathe. As the stone and pumice got larger and larger, buildings started to collapse. And then what is known as a pyroclastic surge happened. This would have been a hundred mile an hour surge of superheated poisonous gas and pulverized rock which poured down the side of the mountain and swallowed everything in its path. That does not sound fun. And we are just about to the Pompeii ruins. I think we're looking right about here. And we'll take a fly over. Maybe we'll do a loop and make another pass in the other direction towards the bay. But we are over Pompeii. By the time the Vesuvius eruption came to an end the next day, Pompeii was buried under millions of tons of volcanic ash. And again, about 2,000 Pompeians were dead. And of course, the eruption killed many more people uh, in the areas outside of Pompeii. Because of the manner in which the city and the victims were entombed in the rock and ash, it created an amazing snapshot of daily life in a Roman city and it was preserved to be discovered later. As we approach the ruins from east to west towards the bay, this first building that you can see here is the amphitheater. They believe it's the oldest surviving Roman amphitheater and they believe it was built in 70 BC. The remains of Pompeii were first rediscovered in the 1500s during the digging of a water channel. But after a few items had been unearthed, no real action to excavate the site took place. It would take another 150 years before a campaign was truly started to have them fully uncovered. In 1748, the king of Naples, known as Charles of Bourbon, sent a surveying engineer to the area 
with a mission to bring back ancient statues and other treasures to decorate his palace. The engineer looked closely at where the water channel had been dug. He discovered where the artifacts had been found earlier. And once they began the digging there, to his amazement, they discovered the buried city of Pompeii. Starting originally as a disorganized, mostly treasure hunting endeavor, the excavation eventually became more of an archaeological effort. In 1860, a director of the Pompeii excavations was appointed, and from there the site was excavated in a more systematic manner. One fascinating part of this discovery is that the remains of the 2,000 men, women, and children who were found at Pompeii after most of them had perished from asphyxiation, their bodies were covered with ash that then hardened and it preserved the outline of their bodies. Of course, later as their bodies decomposed to just skeletal remains, it left behind almost a mold of the person. Archaeologists who found these molds uh, filled the hollows with plaster, revealing in grim detail these death poses of the victims of Vesuvius. And the rest of the city is also frozen in time. Well, that was just a brief overview of the events that happened here in 79 AD. You can find some great information and plenty of images of the site and those plaster casts made from the victims on the internet. It's pretty interesting to see. We are almost back to the Naples International Airport, so I will have you on the ground shortly. I hope you enjoyed today's tour, and be sure to check back soon and book a seat on one of the upcoming tours. Naples Tower Dude 005 is 7 miles southeast with Alpha to land. We have started our descent. I will have you back at Naples Capo de Quino Airport in just a few minutes. So until the next time.